So for our number three, um, we want to prove all these items here by contraposition. So the conditional goes if P, then Q, where P is the antecedent and Q is the consequent. And the contrapositive, um, which is logically equivalent to the conditional, we just switch them around and we deny. So we say if not Q, then not P. Um, so for A, we want to have that if X is even, then X plus one is odd. So let's identify our um, antecedent. That one is going to be our consequent. And so to do by contraposition, we're going to begin by assuming not Q. So for A, I'm going to say assume, assume not Q. So assume X plus one is even. So if X plus one is even, then there exists an A belonging to the set of integers such that X plus one is equal to two A. So then I have that X is equal to 2a minus 1. Um, and then from here, what I want to do is have a plus 1 show up, because if I have a plus 1, then I can show that it, it, x is odd. So I'm going to say that, OK, this is the same thing as um, 2a minus 2 plus 1. So all I did was turn that minus 1 into minus 2 plus 1. And then I'm going to factor out the 2 from the first two terms, which is equal to 2 times a minus 2 plus 1. So then I show, OK, a minus 2 belongs to the set of integers. So x must be odd. So assume not Q, show that it leads to not P, and therefore, uh, actually that, that was minus one, not minus two. Should be minus one, yeah, when I factor it out. And so uh, now I'm gonna say, therefore, therefore, if X is even, then X plus one is odd. And that is it for the contraposition of item A. So for item B, we have that our consequent is, sorry, our antecedent is if X is odd, and our consequent is X plus two is odd. So once more, we're gonna switch these around and assume not Q. So for this one, I'm gonna have uh, let X plus two be even then there exists an a belonging to the set of integers such that x plus 2 is equal to 2a. And so here we have that x is equal to 2a minus 2, which is equal to, I'm just going to factor out the 2, 2 outside, and that goes a minus 1. So similarly to the previous one, we say, okay, a minus 1 belongs to the set of integers, so x must be even because it satisfies the definition for even therefore therefore if so now we showed uh, assume not q show that at least not p therefore if p then q therefore if x is odd then x plus 2 is odd and that is it for item b um, let's do item C, where our consequent, our antecedent is going to be x squared is not divisible by 4, and our consequent would be x is odd. So we're going to do this, that, and then we're just going to switch them around. So for C, we're going to say assume, assume x is even. So when we assume x is even, we say, so there exists an a belonging to the set of integers such that x is equal to 2a. So we that is the definition for an even number. And then, um, so when we have x squared is going to be equal to 2a squared, which is going to be equal to um, 4 times a squared. And we say, okay, a squared belongs to the set of integers, and so... Therefore, x squared is divisible by 4. So we show that, hey, if, um, if a number is equal to 4 times another integer, then that number is divisible by 4. Uh, so we, we've assumed not Q, show that it leads to not P, and so our conclusion is, therefore, therefore, if P, then Q. Therefore, 
if x squared is not divisible by 4, is not divisible by 4, by 4, then x is odd. That is it for item C. Now, item D, we have their antecedent is if xy is even and our consequent is um, then either x or y is even. So this is our antecedent, our consequent, and we'll begin by assuming not q, so d. Um, so the opposite, either x or y is even. So whenever we have, say, the proposition um, r or s, when we deny this, when we say not, by de Morgan's laws, this becomes uh, not r and not s. So by de Morgan's laws, we're going to say, uh, suppose x or y are not even. So suppose x and y are odd by de Morgan's laws. So supposing that x and y are odd, then there exists uh, a, b belonging to the set of integers such that x is equal to 2a plus 1 and y is equal to um, 2b plus 1. So we have here that xy is equal to 2a plus 1 times 2b plus 1, which is going to be the same as 4ab plus 2a plus 2b plus 1. Let me just scroll that to the side. Oops, my handwriting got terrible. Uh, plus 2a plus 2b plus 1. Okay, now so we're going to factor out the 2 from the first three terms. It's the same thing as 2 times 2ab plus a plus b and then plus 1. So what we've shown here is that uh, we have to say 2ab plus a plus b belongs to the set of integers. So xy is odd. It fits the definition for an odd number. So xy is odd. So we assume not q, show that it leads uh, to not p, and we say there, therefore, if p then q. Therefore, if xy is even, then, um, then x or y is even. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one, item e. Uh, item e, our hypothesis is if x plus y is even, and our consequent is that x and y have the same parity. So that is our p here. Uh, this is going to be our q. So we're going to say for e, assume not q. So assume x and y have opposite parity. Furthermore, we're going to say let x be even and y be odd without, without a loss of generality. So this without loss of generality just means that because we haven't assumed anything about x and y, we can let one be even and the other be odd um, without having then to switch them around, right? Because the same logic is applies to in the case where y is even and x is odd. Then there exists uh, a, b, a, b belonging to the set of integers such that x is equal to 2a and y is equal to 2b plus 1. Okay, um, so we have that x plus y is equal to 2a plus 2b plus 1, and I'm going to factor out the 2 from the first two terms, which is equal to 2 times a plus b plus 1. And so we have that a plus b belong to the set of integers, so x plus y is odd. Therefore, our conclusion is going to be, therefore, if p, then q. Therefore, if x plus y is even, then x and y have same parity. Okay. So.
So now we're going to go to the next one, item F, where our hypothesis is x, y is odd. And our conclusion is going to be um, both x and y are odd. So for this one, we're going to have uh, this is our p, that is our q, and assume not q. So for f, we have let let um, x or y be even. Because when we're saying by De Morgan's not p and q means not p or not q. So this is what we've done. We've denied uh, the uh, conjunction and turned it into a disjunction. So let x or y be even. Um, and I'm going to say let x be even without loss of generality. So the same thing as before, right? Because x and y um, are generic, it doesn't matter if x is even or y is even. So then there exists an, an A belonging to the set of integers such that x is equal to 2A. So then here we have that xy is equal to 2A times y, which is the same thing as 2 times Ay. So Ay belongs to the set of integers and therefore, therefore xy is even. So assume not Q, show that it leads to not P. So then we say, therefore, therefore, if X, Y is odd, then um, both X and Y are odd. And that is it for item F. Um, okay, let's go to for item G. So item G, we have that uh, our hypothesis is if 8 does not divide x squared minus 1, and our conclusion, then x is even. Um, so what we're going to do here is we are going to just switch these around and deny. So assume, assume x is odd. Assume x is odd. Uh, well, my handwriting is terrible. Let me just fix this. Assume x is odd. Okay. Then there exists integer a. So there exists a belonging to the set of integers such that x is equal to 2a, um, 2a plus 1. Okay. So now they want x squared minus 1. So x squared minus 1 is going to be equal to 2a plus 1 squared minus 1, which is the same thing as... Uh, let's see, I'm going to FOIL that one, so that's going to be 4a squared plus 2a plus 2a plus 4a, and then plus 1 minus 1 just leaves it at that, right? And so x squared minus 1 is equal to 4a squared plus 4a. So now we're going to do two cases because we want 8 to show up. So um, to make 8 show up, we need to multiply everything by 2, right? And that's either the case where um, a is odd or a is even. So we have the case 1, a is odd. Then we say, okay, then there exists a b belonging to the set of integers such that, uh, such that a is equal to 2b plus 1. So... 4a squared plus 4a is going to be 4 times 2b plus 1 squared plus 4 times 2b plus 1. And so let's foil this out. That's going to be, um, let's see, 4 times 4b squared plus 4b plus 4 plus, I'm going to just expand this, plus 8b plus 4. So that's going to be, let's see, 16b squared uh, plus 16b plus 16 plus 8b plus 4. Um, and so that is going to be 16b squared. When we join this, plus 24b plus 24. And now I'm just going to factor out an 8, which is the same thing as 8 times uh, let's see, 2b squared plus 3b plus 3. Then we say, okay, 
2b squared plus 3b plus 3 uh, belongs to the set of integers. So, so what we can say here is that x squared minus 1 um, is divisible uh, is divisible by 8. So x squared minus 1 is divisible by 8. So that is case 1, right? Um, and now let's do case 2 where a is even. So we're going to do um, case 2, a is even. So then there exists a c belonging to the set of integers such that a is equal to 2c. So we have that 4a squared plus 4a is going to be equal to 4 times 2c squared plus 4 times 2c. And that's going to give us, let's see, um, that's going to be 16c squared plus 8c. Let me see if that's right. Yeah. And I'm, which is, I'm going to factor out the 8. 8 times 2c squared plus c. And so we say that 2c squared plus c belongs to the set of integers. So um, x squared minus 1 uh, is divisible by 8. So hey, we have shown here that both in case 1, where 8 is odd, uh, x squared minus 1 is divisible by 8. And in case 2, where a is even, x squared minus 1 is divisible by 8. So in both cases, we have shown that if, um, if x is odd, then x squared minus 1 is divisible by 8. So our conclusion is going to be, therefore, for if 8 divides, if 8 divides x squared minus 1, uh, then, then x is even. So we've had to break this down to cases, but in both ways we've shown that if, uh, if not q, therefore not p. And so then we just conclude saying if p, then q. Um, okay, so let me erase all of this, and we are just missing one last item here, which let me it up let's see we're going to do now item H okay so item H is um, our P is if X does not divide Y Z and our Q is then X does not divide Z so assume not Q so assume that x divides, assume that x divides z. Then uh, there exists an integer a, so an a belonging to the set of integers, um, such that z is equal to x a. Um, and so now we want y z, so y z is equal to x a, x a y, right? Um, and if yz is equal to x a y, we have that yz is therefore equal to x times a y. And we say that a y belongs to the set of integers, so x divides y z. And so we assume not q, show that it leads to not p, therefore, if x does not divide y z then x does not not divide divide z and that is it for problem 3